Good morning. This is Monday, the 23rd of November. And this is the week of Thanksgiving, our holiday of uh, being grateful and thankful to God for all his blessings and grace. And so this week, I want you to think ahead of time. You know, we're wound up about cooking and turkeys and dressing and family and getting together. And we talk about Thanksgiving. But let's share things this week with each other of what we're thankful for. And let's share with God what we're thankful for. Let's allow all the other stuff maybe to come and happen, but may it be in the light of a heart of gratitude toward Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, toward Jesus that ever lives to intercede for us, toward Jesus that doles out the grace at the throne of God. Let's begin with prayer today. Father, as we think about being grateful, help us to be reminded to count our many blessings, to name them one by one, that when Satan comes to torment us and when the world overwhelms us, we can look and say, see what great things God has done. And we will be unmovable. We will be steadfast. We will be firm in our faith and resist the wiles of the devil. May the gratitude of our heart be shown to you this week. In Jesus' name, amen. I just want to share some of the things that I am thankful for this week. Of course, I'm thankful for my wife and my daughter and my son. I'm thankful for the home that Jesus gave us to live in, the cars that he gave us to drive. Yes, I'm thankful for all this. I'm thankful for the country we live in, as messed up as it is at this time. I'm thankful for this time of life, this period that we live in, even with the pandemic. I'm thankful for the opportunity, for I believe that I am here at this time in person for just such a time as this. And I believe that each one of you who are born-again believers are here at this time just for this time to be used by God for his honor and glory. So I'm thankful for all these things. But I'm also thankful for some other things that I don't need to forget. I'm thankful for the Bible. In Deuteronomy 32, verse 47, a verse I remember and think about a lot, is for He's talking about the Word of God, the laws of God. It says, For it is not empty words for you. These are not idle words. The Bible isn't full of just words on ink on the paper. It says, But your very life, your very life, the Bible reveals a holy God to us. The Bible reveals sinful man to us. The Bible reveals the promise of God for a Messiah, the anointed one who will come to save the world. The Bible reveals how we can be reconciled to a holy God. The Bible is life from God. It says, By this word you shall live long in the land that you are going over the Jordan to possess. This was for the Jews. By obedience to the law of God, to the, to the word of God, we find life because he responds to our obedience. He responds to our belief in him. So it's the, the being of life. The word is the Bible. In 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, familiar passage says all scripture. Now you have to remember Paul is writing to Timothy before the New Testament was formed. So when he refers to Scripture, he's referring to the Old Testament. So people who sit back and say, we don't read the Old Testament because that, that was before grace. No, it wasn't. There was grace in the Garden of Eden. And Paul and all the apostles referred to and quoted and studied the Old Testament Scriptures. We ought to also. It says, all Scripture is breathed out by God. It is life that he gives. And it is profitable. It is beneficial for teaching us right from wrong, good from evil, holiness from unholiness. 
the things of God and the things that aren't of God. It says, and for reproof, when we read the Word of God, we know right and wrong. That's why a lot of people don't want to read it, because of the conviction that it brings. And this conviction, this reproof that we are wrong and God is right, brings about correction in our life. You see, we're not going to be corrected. We're not going to correct our behavior and our thoughts unless we believe that they're wrong. And for training in righteousness, it doesn't just correct us, it trains us to be right, to be right with God, to be right with other men, to do what's right every time. So the Word of God, the Bible, not only is life to me, but it is a transformer of my life. Remember Romans 12, 2? Don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, your attitudes, the way you think. This comes from reading the Bible and the Old Testament. Then in Psalm 119, verse 105, your word, the Bible, is a lamp to my feet. It is a flashlight. It is a light that goes ahead of me to show my feet where to fall. It gives me steadiness and firmness in the darkness around me and a light to my path. I don't stumble around in the darkness wondering, is this right or is that right? I, I don't, I'm not overcome by the darkness of evil and sin. Why? Because I allow the Bible, the Holy Word of God, to light my way. It's a guide for my life. It transforms my life. It is life itself. And then in Psalm 119 again, verse 11, it says, I have stored up or hidden your word, the Bible, Scripture, in my heart. I've memorized Scripture. I've learned it. I remember when I was a little boy and I'd go spend time with my grandmother. and My brother and sister can probably remember this and my cousins, but we would spend time with my grandmother. And she was a Christian. She taught Sunday school, but she was also a school teacher. And every day we were given, that we spent with her, we were given three verses to learn. One was our breakfast verse, one was our lunch verse, and one was our supper verse. And in order to eat breakfast, we had to recite that verse to her. We couldn't read it out of the Bible. We had to tell her what it was. In order to eat lunch, we had to recite our lunch verse. And in order to eat supper, we had to recite our supper verse. What was she doing? She was teaching us to hide God's word in our heart, to memorize it. Why? That I might not sin against you. She knew from Scripture that she'd read and learned in her life that if we, even as non-believers, because I wasn't a Christian then, and my brothers and sisters, we weren't. We were just her grandchildren. But she knew that if she could get the word of God into our hearts at a young age, that the chances of, of us becoming believers in Jesus Christ was much greater. And it would teach us right from wrong. And when the opportunity to sin came up in our lives, we would remember these verses and the Word of God, and we would think, oh, God says this is wrong. Or we'd be in another situation, we'd say, oh, God says this is right. You see, it's not what Hugh Foles says is right or wrong. It's what a holy God says is right or wrong. And he says it in, in the Bible. We have the Ten Commandments. We have the Law of Moses. We have Scripture over and over again. The Word of God protects us from sin. It doesn't keep us pure from it, but it protects us from sin. It waves red flags in our face. You see, a lot of people never have a red flag waved in their face when they're fixing to sin, they're tempted to sin. They just think it's okay. But if we hide God's Word in our heart, if we teach our children to do that, then that's a red flag waved in their face when sin is present. And they avoid it. So the Bible is life. The Bible is transformation. The Bible is the light that guides us. And the Bible protects us from evil. I'm thankful for this. And I hope you are thankful that God breathed upon holy men of old 
to write these things down, the Word of God written on paper that we might read and have faith and believe. Search the Scriptures today and be blessed by the Bible.